about the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be true. And it is not a question of a little occultism or a touch of mysticism, Mr. Devon. It is vampires. There's a host of damned souls of hell about. Here, the old gods aren't dead. And what of the true god? Well, he's dead. He can't complain. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. You're listening to Paranormal UK Radio. Welcome to the Paranormal UK Radio Show, the flagship show for the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm your host, Irene Allen, and uh, it took us to the end. And, and oh, you're forgetting, and who, yeah. who else is with you? Mark Johnson. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Why but, can't you just be Mark Allen or somebody like that? You know, that sounds sexy, actually, Mark Allen, doesn't it? Ooh, Since that's yeah. a lot better than or Mark Johnson. <laughs> what do you think, Mark? Anyway, that's it. I'm here with Mark Johnson, and I'm sorry I messed up and nearly forgot his name again. I didn't nearly forget your name. I just got mixed up. I got tongue-tied, Mark. Uh, oh, God. Well, you know, after all these years, I'm used to it now, so... Anyway, everybody, welcome to the program. Uh, yes. Irene, I, I don't think you were available last time, so... No, I haven't, this... been on, I haven't been on for a couple of weeks, have I? Yeah, you've had stuff going on and... Yeah, I've been busy in other areas. Oh. I haven't felt well and sometimes I haven't been well. Other times I've been so busy I just haven't had time to do a show. But you've well, managed to hold the thought. I do my best. Yeah, you do some brilliant now stuff. Now that I there. have a little too much time on my hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are we going to talk about today? Did you to mention to anybody in the last couple of weeks about my husband seeing that dot? Um, old cloaked figure in the house? No, I was waiting for you to share that story <laughs> since that was yours and not mine to share. Okay. I'll share the story then. Um, my husband was in one part of the house on his own, I suppose. I think I was upstairs myself. There was only the two of us in the house. And he was sitting there when all of a sudden this very, very dark figure, and it was shaped as if it had a cloak on, like a bit like, um, oh, God, what's his name? The fella that, uh, do you know what? I've forgotten my history now. And we're related to this bloke as well, Daniel, who's the boy? Who's the man that put the cloak over the puddle? So, um, oh, testing him here. <laughs> I don't Chris. know. Walter Scott. Was it Walter Scott? So Walter Scott. Okay. A cloak. Anyway, he had this cloak, and he walked. He came. He came out of. Uh, or it seems that he came out of the wall. He walked across to a fireplace and he just vanished. Hmm. Mm. And that was my Brian that saw that. So, you know, and there's not a psychic bone in his body anywhere. Well, you don't necessarily need it in your house. I mean, I saw the uh, pinpoint of light. I smelled the strange smells. Um, uh, what else do we have happened? I got poked in the bum. Yeah, and I tell, oh, that's what I meant to tell you. When my son came with his girlfriend, we were sitting in the kitchen at the breakfast bar, and something poked me in the bottom three times. Yeah, I got poked twice. It's like somebody took a finger while I was brushing yeah. my teeth at the sink in the in the loo, and uh, it was like my left cheek. They went boink, boink. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, okay, fascinated yeah. with well, your bum. <laughs> with your bum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but the, um, you know, this little whatever it is, 
I know it's not the um the ghosts in the house because they you know they're a bit more polite. They wouldn't poke you in the bum or anything like that. But we have always pretended or joked that we've got a goblin, and we've now named the goblin Noblin the Goblin. <laughs> and a lot of things have been happening since we've named Noblin the Goblin, and uh, I think it could, you could have been poked by. It could Not be. It, it could be some kind of elemental uh, they're passing yeah. through, or maybe it's yeah. always <coughs> been, been here for ages. I've been saying, I've, I told my friend once that we had a goblin in the house, and um, look at the legends. In, in the UK, there's so many, especially Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, you know, there's brown is that actually live in the houses and things like that. Also, they say it's all in the legends and folklore mm-hmm. about these type of goblin things that live in houses. Goblins, well, anyway, I told brownies, my friend. Fairies. I told my friend once. She said, "Where is the goblin?" I said, "It's under the stairs." She said, "How do you know it's under the stairs?" I said, "Because it sits on the hoover under the stairs. So it has the door slightly open and it watches you as you go up and down the hallway." Uh, and she believed me. She actually believed me. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're so evil. Now, yeah, so now when the grandkids come or anything, they say, well, you know, where's the goblin nanny? He's under the stairs. Don't worry about him. He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Well, you know, hey, I, you know, that cloaked figure, didn't your son Jamie a few months back see yeah. him when he was staying there? Yeah, he saw a very, very dark shape at the bottom of the bed upstairs in the bedroom. You sleep in, Mark. Mm-hmm. You're here. And um, Brian also saw it a few months back in that same bedroom as well. Yeah. Yeah, With yeah I didn't see anything when I was in there other was, than the pinpoint of light. Yeah, I'm not sure whether they actually saw the cloaked figure or whether it was a black mass. Hmm. It's a black mass often that we see in this house i've seen it in my bedroom um but i think brian when he saw something in the bedroom it was the black mass because he said it kind of floated along uh, above him and everything and rested behind his head uh on the um bars of the bed Hmm. interesting Mm, uh, in that area in that area yeah, so, you know, it's all happened here in this house. You know that. Never be able all to typical of everything that yes. goes on Irene's house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you, if you I mean, do... Actually, I am going to miss it when I do go, because if I go into a normal house, it's going to be so quiet, isn't it, compared with this? You know, you get things thrown around in this house, and... Uh, you can always ask voices, to get to come with you. Oh, I had voices. When was it? Night before last, there was voices out in the on the landing. First of all, mm-hmm. I was footsteps, and there was some footsteps. But there was voices. And as soon as I registered that someone was out there talking, as soon as that hit my conscious mind, someone's out there talking, that it kind of just stopped. The last word I heard was the word anyway, mm-hmm. and that was a woman. Didn't you also experience something in your bedroom the other day? I've experienced a lot of things in my oh, bedroom. <laughs> I don't think we. I don't think we mentioned oh, this. Yeah. I don't yeah. think we mentioned this on a past okay. show, but there was the time thing. The time thing. Oh when yeah. You got so up to go to the loo. Yes, got up to go to the loo. I can't remember the time now. I think it was about three o'clock or, or two. No, it was two four. It was four o'clock. Was it four o'clock? I, mm-hmm. I remember telling you about it, but I didn't remember. You know, it was a few weeks back. And um, yeah, four o'clock. The clock is uh, directly on the wall at the bottom of my bed. So when I got up to go to the loo, I looked at the clock and it said four o'clock. Went to the loo, done what I had to do in the loo. Wash my hands like every good person does. And um, came to get back into bed, and it was 20 to 4. I thought it was you actually came back into bed and you fell asleep. And then no. it felt. You, no, you, you told me, 
You hang on, let's back up here a second. You told me that you came back from the loo, you went back to bed, you fell That's asleep. Right. Yeah, you are right. I did fall asleep. I fell asleep and then woke up and it was twenty to four. But you said it felt and like I felt like I had a deep long sleep. Mm-hmm. Like you had slept all night, you were expecting it to be dawn, and yeah. then when you woke up it was still dark and you looked at the clock and it was twenty to That's four. It. That's it. And I okay. felt like I'd had a really deep sleep. So not only, I mean, the weirdest part for me about that is, is not only did you go to, back to bed and felt like you went through this incredibly deep sleep and woke up and not only had the time not progressed forward, you went back in time another 20 minutes to before mm-hmm. you got up the first time. That's right. Yeah. Talk about I wrote it on Facebook. I wrote yeah. it down on Facebook somewhere, haven't I? I think you did, yeah. But it was, it was on my post, Facebook. Talk about high strangeness. Yeah, yeah. I know I wrote it on Facebook because I wanted to get it down before it, while it was still fresh in my head before I forgot everything. But then, then there was the night before last. Lying in bed, I heard what I can only say was three blasts of a trumpet or a bugle behind it was coming from the wall behind my head, that area. And it was like three loud blasts. And when I realized what it was, it stopped. And then I felt something was lying beside me on the bed. And it, yeah, I know about night terrors and I know what the doctors all say about your brain shutting down and everything. But this thing was lying beside me on the bed. I could feel the weight of it. And it moved up and slithered across my shoulder like a snake and ended up on top of me and I was pinned to the bed. Hmm. And I could not move. The the funny, strange thing about that was the fact that I heard this trumpet blast three times. Now, how did you get rid of it? How did you get it to let go? Well, I went into religious mode and started to say the Lord's Prayer, but halfway through I kind of forgot what the ending was. So I... (laughs) Because you can't talk. You have to do all this in your mind because your your mouth does not work. No, I've I've experienced Uh, that, yes. So I shouted... I finished with saying amen, and then I said amen a bit louder, and then I said amen with so much power and sh- so loud in my mind, I was yelling it. This thing just shut up and lifted out the way. So I blasted it with energy, in other words. So you don't think that was your goblin? You think it was something else? Well, I felt it was my goblin. He wants to learn to play that trumpet properly. That's all I can say. <laughs> Because if that's all I'm getting is three blasts every time, he can stick his trumpet where the sun don't shine. Well, my sister-in-law's boyfriend plays trumpet, so he can give him lessons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Well, fascinating stuff. Marky, Marky, if he, if he plays the trumpet, can you get him to record three blasts on the trumpet so I can figure out whether it is actually a trumpet or whether it is a bugle? Okay, I'll ask him. Mm-hmm. All righty. Well, we should get on with the show. We've jabbered on long enough here. Yeah. Uh, want to introduce our guest for tonight, who Irene already got talking before I had a chance to introduce him. Good, good job, Irene. Um, mm-hmm. Our guest tonight is Daniel Barnett. Yeah. Our guest tonight is Daniel Barnett. And Daniel has his own podcast, Mythical Legends, talking about all things having to do with Bigfoot and every other type of cryptid you can think about. Uh, he puts on a really good show. He's an investigator and he's only 14 years old. So, Daniel, welcome to the program. Hi, um, thank you so much, Mark. Um, that was an amazing introduction and I can't wait to speak on your show. <laughs> well, thank you. After you, you had to hear us waffling there for. The first 12 minutes. Um, so, Daniel, tell tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you're, you're 14. You've got your own podcast. 
you're out investigating <coughs> basically a, let's start at the beginning i mean what made you interested in this subject how did you get involved in it <laughs> how long do you have um um so um i started probably about uh three years ago and I was sat with my granddad and we were all watching a show called Expedition Bigfoot and yeah. um, it's a it's an amazing show in in my opinion and it's one of my favorites I like it too have we interviewed that uh-huh. lot Mark no we, we haven't we've interviewed so many um, Bigfoot people from shows off of the television it's unbelievable <laughs> um mm. And we were um, sat, and I was just interested. And my cousin, William, was sat next to me. um, And I said to him, why don't we start what they're doing? So we we went out into our local forest, and we we just um, started gaining the experience. So we were looking for deer um and i'm researching deer and we probably did that and we put a small team together probably did that for about a year year and a half and it was until then obviously when we called it expedition deer it came to an end um because you couldn't there was only so much that you could do and we then i turned to my director um and and we said look let's start having a look at cryptids so i start i started the mythical legends podcast and met um met some amazing researchers and scientists um and from from then we have progressed a lot and we've found some a lot of stuff in the current forest we are investigating um and it's just really really interesting to one hear people's stories and go out and do my own research myself with my team here now you are located uh in southwestern england Mm -hmm. um <clears throat> now you said you in the forest that you were investigating you started having interesting results can you share what type of results you were getting um so i can share um as much as much as i can um so we it was probably about a month and a half ago now where it was me and um and my camera partner and we we came over and we and we were actually the aim of the expedition was to search for where a, a big cat might live because we have the uh, the Exmoor beast over here. So we were we were searching for that and my partner went, "What's that?" And I and we both looked over and it was an 18 inch print and we were shocked. And when I mean shocked, I mean shocked. Um, we were just looked over and we didn't know what to think. So we made a cast of it and I took some environmental DNA. Um, and actually, um, I've sent off some envir- environmental DNA to Portugal and the, the results are coming back, I hope, this weekend um, with um, some, ex- some exciting stuff um, I- I've heard. And we we found tree structures. We found um, like some. We 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 keep smelling some weird things. We found yeah, they're, they're meant to be a bit stinky, aren't they? They are, yeah. And and I I don't know what what we're smelling. And not once yet have I said this is bigfoot activity. I'm saying yeah. this is this is weird activity. What, what's going on? And I hope. Um, that when the environmental DNA comes back, I might get an an answer from that. Um, and That'd be great. We, yeah, and 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 we just found some weird stuff, really. Um, and and like I said, about two hours ago, we we arrived back from the forest with um, a mass with fi- with a finding of a massive tree structure, uh, as in we had to use a rope and that to get down 
and it was huge. And the funny thing is, is I had gone down there myself um, uh-huh. and, and my director probably about two weeks before, and that weren't there. So it's obviously recent, So which, which actually I'm a bit freaked out by. <laughs> well, Daniel, can you send me... Did you take a picture of the tree structure? Yes, we did, yeah. <clears throat> if you can send that to me, I'll add it with the uh, graphics for the promo for this show. Um, I'd like to see it. And I'm curious, what made you pick this particular location? Were you hearing of legends of things happening? Or did you just pick it by chance and just got lucky? So there was a... There's a uh, quite a big forest opposite which I had done previous expeditions and um, experience ones over there and that's kind of a training one because there's not really much wildlife it's flat but it's um, obviously you have a few badgers um, your foxes but not much deer because there's not much seclusion now there was a small uh, probably about a five mile forest across from this forest and i thought we haven't in- investigated that forest yet let's go over have a look and we only had the intention on investigating this forest for one day not now not two three months now um and i think that's that's been where we have kind of uh, got to. I've started to make a, make a map of the big of the Bigfoot sightings, Dogman sightings, oh. um, Big Cat sightings. Dogman, did you say? say I dog did man. say Dogman. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it, it, I, I'm stuck between if it is Dogman, um, which is actually similar to what Bigfoot is, um, yeah. or is it Bigfoot or is it Big Cat or is it simply nature? I don't know yet. And I'm hoping I get some answers soon because it's driving me mad. <laughs> you know, you are, you're cl- sorry, Mark. You are close to Exmoor, are you? Because you, talk, uh, you talked earlier on about the black cat on that Exmoor, which most people know about. There yes. have been cat sightings here in Wales as well. Oh, uh, really? Seen, yeah, seen by policemen. Oh, wow. Well, um, Not and far say, from here, actually. <laughs> say we're near Exmoor. Um, I think it'll take about an hour of drive. Um, but say the Quantock Hills, it, this forest where we're going is 10 mm-hmm. minutes from where I live. So it's not, it's not far at all. Okay. You, you know, um, first of all, uh, something I completely forgot about when I was there, Irene. When we went and visited Kidwelly Castle, mm-hmm. is that they are known for this famous black cat that's been sighted for centuries. What, round Kidwelly Castle? Yeah, I'll send you a link to it. I remember seeing oh. it on a program once. So there's a black well, I cat think around. That, that might be the one that these policemen have seen. It could be. I'll send you. Yeah. I'll send you the link to it later. But to get back to Daniel's thing. You know, of all the cryptids that I've heard of, which, you know, there's a lot of bizarre cryptids, some very, that sound natural, like these big cats. Um, I've seen big black cats when I was younger in areas where they should not have been, because they'd say that they don't exist here in America. Well, I've seen them in, of all places, Death Valley in California. When I was yeah. about 12 years old, there were two of them way up on the rock ledge above us. And we watched them for about a half an hour uh, moving around. You see the long tails. And I mean, these were like Black Panthers, but they say there aren't any. So go figure. <clears throat> but when it comes to Dog Man, I can't help but have a real hard time with that one. I know Dog Man is very mm. popular. I know people who claim up and down they've seen it. Do I do not believe them? Absolutely not. I do believe that that's what they saw. But yet, for some reason, I have a lot 
easier time believing in Bigfoot than I do a dog man. I'm and with I'm de- I'm definitely with you on that. It it's just so bizarre and strange. A big hominid that walks on two legs. Yeah, but I can understand. Just, yeah, but Mark, the stories of uh Shuck and other mythical dogs go back hundreds of years in this country. Mm. They must do have they, started somewhere. Do they do they you walk know, on two big legs? Black dogs that, well, I don't know. Uh, that's that's the that's thing what, with I just, I, man, does he walk on two legs? Yes, he's like a Bigfoot, except people. He's long, he's hairy, walks on two legs, except the head. It's like a werewolf. Yeah, it's like a werewolf. It's like the it head is, uh, is is a long snout, like a dog, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to be more more vicious, more um, hostile than a regular Bigfoot. Yeah, well, and, when you think about it, yeah, go on. No, but I mean, uh, oh God, I'm hating Skype tonight. We're just talking all over each other here. Yeah. Um, but I have heard the stories of the of the dogs being seen all over the UK. I I, I yeah. know that story. Yeah, they're they're protectors. You know, they're um, wow, well, the shark. They they go under all different names. But these legends start somewhere. It's like the werewolf. They've got to start somewhere, haven't they? I guess. Um, I don't know. It's the, the, who, who, who was it who wrote the story of the werewolf book? Um, Mary? There was, one? No, no. There was never a book on the werewolf. There were old legends going back all the way through the Middle Ages and earlier of werewolves. And then, and then they made the, the movies about them in the 1940s. But... It was never yeah. of an actual. It wasn't based on a book like Frankenstein was, or Dracula. Okay, so maybe there is something. Maybe there is something in Dog Man. Well, you know, you, the names you, just changed over the years. The more I learn as we move forward in time, the more I start to accept things that I normally would have dismissed, uh, especially when we start dealing with the interdimensional world, things kind of coming in and out of our existence. Uh, I mean, some of the things that have happened on Skinwalker Ranch, the wolves that they've seen there of impossible yeah. size. Um, I, I I struggle with it, but I'm not discounting it. Yeah, and years and hundreds of years ago, the whole of Europe practically was covered with walls. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Uh, so, but would a you're seeing you go down in this area, Daniel, and you you're finding evidence possibly of these um, these cats, these black cats, uh, but yet a cat doesn't build a tree structure. Yeah, that's true, and 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 that's what we're really stuck on. And I, I'm autistic, and I I need to kind of put a finger on 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 everything that I do, and this is really this really irritates me that I can't put a finger on what on what is going on there in that forest and me and, and me and my partner were stood in that forest today going I, every time we've been there something new has come up which, which is just weird why why and it makes me think is it something else is it not a cat is it or is it just nature to that forest i don't know Maybe maybe it's something that's living alongside, you know, the, the print that you took, the footprint, that was a human type footprint with toes, yes, it wasn't an animal. It was footprint. toes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe so, both. Oh, so I I guess I misunderstood. So the footprint you found was more human like, not cat yeah, like. Yeah, like a big. Oh footprint. yeah, yeah. Eighteen hmm. inches, not. Mm. Did you take photos of it as well? Yeah, and I even have a cast of it. I would really like to see the, the pictures of that because, mm-hmm. you know, one of, one of the thing, things nobody thinks about over here in this country is everybody thinks, oh, the, well, there's Bigfoot sightings all around the world. There's lots in the U.S. 
yet nobody ever includes the UK. And there are stories of people encountering Bigfoot-like creatures in the UK. And Irene and I have talked about the Welsh Bigfoot, the Trey Moore, um, on more than a few occasions. In fact, you supposedly have one in the hills above where you live and you hear it. Hey, we're coming into autumn, so you should keep an audio recorder out now because this is about time the howling starts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But mm-hmm. they... Um... Oh, like I say, also in Scotland, I can't remember what the Scottish one's called now. Oh, God. Something Celtic that says Big Hairy Man? Yeah, something like that. You know, Big Hairy Man. (laughs) 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 Put one out in the kitchen. But the... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And the legends of these go back. Like in Germany and places like that, they go back hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. But when I started, well, going on the radio all all those years ago, when I started Spirit Rescue International, I'd never heard of Bigfoot in the UK until I started going on the radio. Then the stories started coming out. And then I had my own experiences. Are they tied in with UFOs? This is what we've got to uh, we've got to think about because it seems to me that they are tied in with UFOs. And there's so many UFO sightings here in Wales and obviously mm. where you live as well, Daniel. Yeah. So, well, the way I yeah. look at it, right? <laughs> uh, the way I look at it in my head, you've got a UFO up in the sky. It's got a few animals in there. It's got a black cat and it's got a dog man and it's got a Bigfoot, and every now and then they put them down on to have a run around down here, do their business, and then they take them back and fly off. <laughs> well, you well, also like have to it. keep in mind, Irene, most UFO sightings are just mm. lights, globular oh, yeah. orbs, yeah. lights in the sky. They're, they're not like a shiny metal craft. Mm. Um, and there have been a lot of these orb sightings in relation to Bigfoot sightings. Yeah, uh, I saw one, Mark. I forgot to tell you this. Back in the summer, I was laying down on the Italian patio, right? And I was looking up at the sky, and I watched an aeroplane fly over, a passenger plane. Mm-hmm. And following it was like a little ball of light, and it followed that plane all the way until that plane went out of sight. I've heard of that before. That happens a mm. lot. No, I watched that from my garden back in the summer. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Mm. Um, getting back, it, it goes back to the point is, do I think UFOs are landing, dropping off creatures and letting them run out or do whatever? <laughs> I, like to, I like to think they are. <laughs> I, not necessarily, although there have been reports of that happening, but... I think what we're what we're dealing with is oh God. interdimensional. It's interdimensional, but in also in some ways it's right here in our dimension, in our reality, and it's masked and we can't see it. And I liken it to you know light waves, being able to see light. The the light, the entire electromagnetic spectrum is huge but the visible light spectrum is this little sliver right in the middle and that's what we can see with our eyes and then you start moving out in either direction whether into the infrared or the ultraviolet you know it's just out of our range of perception but it's still there our eyes can't see it how often have people talked about being in these areas where there's Bigfoot activity or other type of cryptid activity where it seems like they appear and disappear. And maybe it's the fact that they're not disappearing, they're there, but they have the ability to maybe shift to a slightly higher vibration where our eyes can no longer see. It's like the creatures that you saw on out in your back garden. That That's looked right. like they were cloaked, yeah. um, like the predator, and, and they're kind of shimmering. 
Yeah, it's like, you know, are they using technology or are they like just out of phase from our ability to see visible light just enough that all you could see was the outlines? Oh, well, maybe. Mm. Sometimes these balls of light could also be these things. They can, uh, I think they sometimes can present themselves as these balls of light. Uh, based like on on my friend who was a big researcher in Ohio and yeah, and that book M was in the woods, wasn't it? He was in the middle of the woods, the woods when he called me, freaking why is it out. Always happen- yeah, why is it always happening in the woodlands? Because that's where mm-hmm. these things live. They're not they're not going to be down your street. There's too many people. <laughs> no, in my back garden. <laughs> well, your your back garden has houses on either side and a big cow pasture, you know, cow farm behind you. And um, there's not a lot of woodlands around. You have to go up into the mountains for isolation. Mm. That's why I'm interested in these woods that Daniel is investigating because it seems like it's a uh, an area of high strangeness. Yeah. Um, I I will mention to you. Um, so so we have some good equipment out there. Um, and and cu- and currently, I've got a trail camera at that tree structure. I was just going to ask you. Um, I was going to ask you if you put trail cameras up. Yeah. So um, I've got one out now, and I'm currently um looking at a picture because I've got my phone next to me, and there's some sort of shadow in it, and it scared me to death. Because yeah. I've looked, I've looked at it, and it looks like there is some sort of shadow in it. I, it could be the bush, but I, it, it's, it's surely strange. And and when and when people say that you don't know they're there, then it's like, well, maybe mm. could that happen to us? Um, it could be a tree. It could be, um, but it. It's just weird, and and all the evidence that we've gathered, there has been new evidence coming in and in and in. And I've gone to I don't know if you guys know uh, Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, we know. Um, him. <laughs> yeah, and um, he he's um, he has um, analysed some hair samples for me. Yeah, um, very nice man. And yeah, and. Um, and I have a group of scientists and researchers that that help me um, mm-hmm. when, when I'm out researching. And that's how I get a lot of this info. And I think over the past um, even few months, I think we've gathered a lot of information about where to go, what to what to find and the key places. And it's like when um, when Mark, you asked me about um, places wise. Well, this forest has a stream running uh, down the bottom of it, so it's a it's a possible water source. And then you've got deer and um, and all sorts of animals Rabbits inside and that things, forest yeah. um, that 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 these creatures can feed off of. And um, I know of a story of Bigfoot um, eating berries and 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 the fruit kind of things Mm -hmm. um i i currently have apples and that out there and and we we, we've used most of our um equipment and and i'm investing in more to 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 try and um find a little bit more out about what the uk bigfoot is and Mm. and try and try and gain as much info and 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 that's how i work i need i need to get the info i need to and um and and basically that's what the expedition is about it is is going out find just going out and seeing anything there could have been a chance that if we went past that footprint there could have been a chance that we saw nothing i it, it it it's luck in my opinion, we've come across that um, mm-hmm. as luck, and or, then we've gone on, yeah, or or one that I don't I don't want to think about because in 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 my in my head it has to be logical, but in the paranormal world, maybe we were meant to 
come mm-hmm. across that. I don't know. My 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 head is so scrambled because I don't know what to think anymore. I really don't. I I I don't know what what's logical anymore in the cryptids world. Let, let me put yeah. it to you this way: You're growing up. And you're starting to realize you're tuning more into reality because logic and science in this world will only take you so far. And it has a habit of ignoring what's right in front of your face. Um, The whole ideas that we've been talking about tonight with interdimensional stuff and, you know, sometimes even spiritual side of things um, that science would outright reject now, it's great when you can get a footprint or a, tr- or a picture of a tree structure or hair samples that you can go and have analyzed. All of that is great. At the same time, you have to start using your own your own intuition, your own mind. And you know, one of the things I was going to ask you is when you – the picture that you've got of the shadow – was that off a trail cam, or you just took a picture and it happened to show up there? So, uh, I, and and this is literally, I don't know, and I need to do more analysis on it because I've only just seen it now. And it was taken by my phone of uh, my, I had two partners out there today. One um taken a picture of the tripod because we wanted to do a comparison and i've just realized in the back area of it there's just like a, just the a, a two ears and just like a facial outline now it could be a tree it could be a bush it could be um, it could be what you're saying is it could be paradoria yeah it it, it could be stuff to do with the forest and i will definitely go back now and go and have a look um but to me currently sat here right now in my studio it looks like bigfoot i'm going to be honest with you i'm very very intrigued by your research and i'd love to see these pictures you can send them through skype Thanks. if you want um what i'm very impressed with is the fact that for a 14 year old and i don't mean this in a condescending way in any shape way shape or form i'm amazed at how uh in grown up you are mature you are and how you are your intellect you're able to look at things and pick them apart and rationalize it not jump to conclusions um but you're also your mind is open to new things uh you you sound 20 years older than you really are. And <laughs> that that um, I find impressive. And I am impressed with, you know, not only the contacts that you've made, dealing having, you know, people in the scientific world being there to support you, the kind of equipment you're using. Mm. Um, in addition to the trail camera, do you have a thermal imaging camera? Um. Uh- uh, currently, no, but I am having a look into possibly investing in one. And currently, um, we don't have that much cash to put towards sure. this. And and obviously, we got we've got to go reasonably. But um, that is probably one of the next things to invest in. And my trial cameras do have night vision, infrared, um, so I can pick up some yeah. good um and and in fact i will send you a photo of just an outline of some sort of to me it looks like a deer other researchers have said it looks like bigfoot or dogman so i'll send you that one as well okay um cuz i was going to recommend to you if you want to get a thermal camera which when you're out in the woods it's an excellent tool because it will pick up animals, you know, they're all going to give off a heat signature. It'll pick up things that maybe your infrared camera won't pick up. Um, FLIR, uh, the company that specializes in the thermal cameras, they make one. It's very relatively inexpensive that works with your phone. It's called a FLIR One um, or the FLIR One Pro. Now, in American dollars, they're a couple hundred dollars. 
but it's better than the couple of thousand dollars <laughs> or pounds <laughs> that it would cost uh, to buy the bigger handheld devices. But this one fits on your phone. You download the app. It works with your phone software and the imagery, thermal imagery is great. I used it when we were over, when I came over to the UK and we investigated a pub and I was running thermal that night. Um, but when you're out in the woods, uh, it's an excellent tool to have. And let's say you found that footprint and you ran the thermal on it. If it's giving off heat, it means it just happened. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, so, and, and that, that, that would frighten me to death, honestly. That's when you run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never run. You run towards, <laughs> not away. <laughs> oh, yeah, sugar. <laughs> I'll put you to the test one day, Mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm yeah. ready. I've yet to run across anything that makes me want to run away. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you what, I am amazed because of your age and one thing or another. You know, Bigfoot is not like, over in the UK, it's it's not like in America. We've got a few investigators yeah. and things, but we're nothing as big as America. Everyone, Just about everyone out there has something to do or something to say about Bigfoot. But you're starting mm-hmm. off now, you're like a pioneer, you know? <laughs> by the time and, by the time you're uh my age, twenty one <laughs> <laughs> by the time that you're my age, yeah, twenty one. You'll um you'll you'll be an expert on the UK Bigfoot. In fact maybe you'll have plenty of evidence that can knock people's you know hats mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Hey, and, where and, uh, where he lives is only a few hours from you, you know, and you have the Trey Moore up in the woods above your house, so you can uh, always I, uh, do an expedition up there too. And yeah. and I um I will say um and I don't know if it's happening yet, but even the news is interested in in what I'm doing. Um yeah, and yeah and and yeah eventually say i'm i'm possibly getting two other researchers down to to come and do an expedition with me and they're they're also uh tagging along in in an event that i'm doing as well which i mm. hope you, you can come to as well yeah well, can i bring my walking stick <laughs> well i'll tell you Daniel, if i get my butt back out there um after the winter um you know hey i'd love to hook you hook up with you and do some investigation in these areas yeah definitely yeah, you'll, not, be, yeah. you'll be over it yeah, might be over sometime in the new year oh amazing mark or are you going in before that i don't know i know, if you, I can I know you sold your christmas tree mark so maybe you're coming over to me for christmas <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, well, uh, let's let's work on the job front first. <laughs> but um, but uh, this is all fascinating. Now, uh, you you have your own. You're putting together a conference that's coming up here soon. Can you tell people about that? Events. Mm-hmm. So so it's it's a children's based event, and I did one probably about three weeks ago and it's a where children can come and uh do some coloring word searches and all sorts of stuff like that to just start to get the interest into bigfoot and then we had a table now next to us which we covered in equipment facts and we actually had uh some researchers come from plymouth and cornwall and and stuff and stuff like that to come and see now with this one i want to do children and adults and kind of mix it in one to try so i've got two paranormal researchers and i've got um a bigfoot researcher and and that to try and make this event come together very good. Um, so what date is it and where can people find out more when it's going to where it's going to be held? So um, I announced this event on Saturday, uh, Sunday, I think. Um, 
and it's going to be held in Burnham Highbridge in um, in the Purple Spoons Cafe, um, and it's on Saturday the 18th of November, um, 10 a.m. to 1.30, and if they want to find more info, they can join my group on Facebook, and I, I will be uploading that constantly. Fantastic. Um, again, I'm really impressed with what you've managed to put together. Now, you, you you were watching the programs with your your father. You've done some some of your radio shows with your father and your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Do any of the either of them participate in any of your investigations? And what do they think of this? So my dad, uh, kind of work is is the technical side and works with me a lot with the podcast. Uh, my granddad was uh, was only on two podcasts because um, his idol is Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I've had him on um, the podcast. So um, so we so we were chatting together. But the team that I put together for the forest expeditions is me, uh, my nan, my cousin, and then dad pops in and out. So 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 it's a family um family affair yeah fa- family thing that that has um the researchers on the outer circle are helping and t- and picking up the um, the investigation when we need help really it's very good very very good uh, i i tell you i i would like to come like i said in November, I'm not sure what's going on, but hopefully I'll have a, more, a better idea very soon. And, uh, oh, amazing. Yeah, just, wouldn't it be great if I could get, if I, wouldn't it be great, Daniel, if I could get Mark over from America at the same time? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> well, me over Otherwise, in November? I, I'd have to start planning that well, real soon. <laughs> yeah. And, and, if you if you can let me know, um, probably before uh, the end of October, because what I'll do, um, Irene, is a uh, is I will announce you as a guest, and I will bring you in as a guest, and 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 I'll announce you pro- probably if you if you wanted that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Fine. Irene, just make sure you don't scare the hell out of everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm a bit worried about, you know. What do you put me down as? What do you put me down as author, exorcist? <laughs> author, author and paranormal researcher for that event. We'll save the whole exorcist thing for later. <laughs> okay, okay, well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been, uh, I'm I'm going to say it, it's been a delight, and I love talking right. with yes. you. And do, do you know, I've laughed tonight, and that is good, Daniel. You've made me giggle. Uh, <laughs> some of the things that we've spoken about and how we've spoken, you know. Mark, you always make me laugh. <laughs> yeah, well, looks aren't everything. Anyway, um... <laughs> Um, but Daniel, thank you very much. And, and again, um, send us the info for the um, for the upcoming event. Uh, oh, yeah, I definitely, definitely want to see your pictures. Please send those to me. Uh, as um, a researcher myself, I'm very, very fascinated and curious to see what you got. And I'll um, give you some um, honest opinions on them. Um, what, what I'll do, Mark, is I will send you some of the info that I'm not going to share for privacy reasons. I will share some of the info of the expedition that I haven't currently released um, for you to get a better idea on, on, some, on some of the stuff we found and some of the great pictures as well. That's fine. You know, I keep uh, everything also, confidential, so yeah, I, I do that uh, for all also, my clients. Also, Daniel, just send him something and tell him that's for the promo. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. Promo. We'll do definitely, yeah. So he doesn't get anything muddled up. <laughs> because if me? it's private, we don't. Yeah, well, Mark, you know, you're not much younger than me. <laughs> but, 
you know what it's like. Uh, yeah. You've yeah. got to push and push the wrong button on the wrong picture and some, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's secret. It's gone. Been there, done that. Anyway, um, well, again, Daniel, thank you. And the uh, the uh, podcast is Mythical Legends. Uh, you can mm-hmm. find it where most podcasts can be found. And um, again, thank you for coming on the program. No, thank you. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to another edition of the Paranormal UK radio show, the flagship show here on the Paranormal UK radio network. And Irene, where can people find us? Everywhere, people, everywhere. And I did like the way you emphasize flagship show yes. without a mistake. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Me. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great week and we will catch you all next time be good humans we will talk with you soon goodbye